This is the video lecture on the time value of money. Now in a previous lecture we were working with bonds and in doing so we were looking at discounted and premium bonds and there were a couple of numbers there that I said I would have to show you later on how those numbers were calculated. Well that's what we're going to talk about in this video. We're going to talk all about interest and specifically the time value of money. And the lessons that you learn in this video will be very helpful when you start to do your bond problems. And we are going to have a video demonstration where we will work with some bonds. And also the lessons that you learn in this video will actually be very helpful in other courses. Because once you understand the time value of money, it has a lot of different applications for many different accounting problems and even various business problems. Now we've talked about interest before, but we're going to review a little bit and talk about simple interest once again. Now simple interest generally is used in any situation where the time span is one year or less than a year. So remember when we had notes payable and notes receivable back in Accounting 1? We used simple interest to solve that because it was a time span of one year or less. Now the simple interest formula is principal times rate times time. Principal is the amount of money either being borrowed or invested. Rate is going to be the interest rate. And time is a time adjustment for the length of time. So for example, a certain number of days. And remember, we use banker's interest, which is based on 360 rather than 365. So unless they tell us otherwise, we always assume banker's interest. So to see a very simple interest example, we're going to invest $1,000 at 10% for 90 days. If we make that investment, how much interest would we earn from that investment? We would actually earn $25 interest. And where does that come from? From the simple interest formula. Principal is the $1,000 being invested times rate, which is the 10%. And notice I'm using 0.10, the decimal equivalent of 10%, times time, which is the 90 days, 90 out of 360 days. So rounded, that is $25 worth of interest. Now like I said, simple interest generally is used for one year or less. But from time to time, especially when we deal with things like bonds, we're going to have a time span of multiple years. So any time that the time span is more than a year, then we're going to be dealing with compound interest. Now we could use the simple interest formula to solve compound interest problems, but the reason we wouldn't want to do that is because it would actually be too much work. We would be doing too much repetitious, busy work. And I'll show you what I mean by that. If you look at this example, say that we're going to invest $1,000 at 10% for three years. So notice the time span is more than a year. Well, a lot of people would think, well, why can't I just say 10% times a thousand, that's a hundred dollars times three, three hundred dollars. Well, you can't do that because when the time span is more than a year, the interest begins to compound and you begin earning interest not only on the principal, but you also earn interest on the interest. So look at this, year one, $1,000 principal, 10% first year, we make $100 worth of interest. But the second year, we actually had now have $1,100 in the investment. So 10% on that times one year, we make $110 worth of interest in the second year. And then that gets added in. Now we have $1,210 in the investment. And again, it compounds once again, 121. 
So in that situation, you do not make $300 worth of interest, actually $331, because you're earning interest on the interest. It's compounding. So that makes it a little bit more complicated. Now in this case, this happened to be a three-year time span. And I used the simple interest formula to solve that. But look at all that work. I had to do three different interest calculations. And that was for three years. Well, what if I was dealing with a bond that was a 20-year bond? Or what if I was dealing with a retirement example for 40 years? See, we would have to sit there and do all those individual calculations, and we don't necessarily want to do that because there's a better and easier way to solve a problem like that. So that is why, even though we could use simple interest, we really only use it for problems that are one year or less. If the problem is more than a year, we will actually solve it a different way.